Hello, beautiful soul. I'm super excited to share a new episode of the Conscious Evolution podcast with a friend and a colleague, Renee Ava from the Netherlands. From a very young age, Renee really became aware of the energies and layers that exist in and around us. Dealing with her own family trauma and depression since her childhood, it really inspired her to go within and explore her inner world. And as you'll hear in this episode, in the beginning of 2015, she had a life-changing experience during her first and second ayahuasca ceremonies. It was from that time that she established a deep connection with plant medicine. And she has been attending and co-facilitating many different sacred medicine ceremonies within the Netherlands and internationally. She's learned from very different shamanic traditions, as well as looking through the lens of psychotherapy with a focus on working in a trauma-informed manner. Renee has an extensive background in the area with the link between domestic violence and animal abuse, which she will share in our conversation. And that experience really helped her work with traumatized women, children, and animals, mainly in women's shelters. And she's now able to use that work, helping to create safe space for people who are embarking on their plant medicine journeys with her. In 2021, Renee decided to focus her life on her passion and her devotion, and that is through working with her voice and walking the path of inner healing by stepping full time into this work as a trauma-informed facilitator in the psychedelic space. So I'm very honored that you'll be able to see her in our retreats in the Netherlands and be really blessed by her voice. So I hope that you enjoy this conversation. And yeah, I think there's something for everyone here. It's time to upgrade your life. In this podcast and our live events and retreats, we explore ways to hack enlightenment by integrating ancient wisdom and modern neuroscience with transpersonal psychology. From plant medicine and psychedelics to breathwork, mindfulness, and neurofeedback, my guests and I will shine a light on the unique capacity that we have to use our conscious mind to evolve individually and collectively as a species. Tune in each week on your favorite podcast player or the Pennington Media YouTube channel for interviews and discussions about holistic healing of trauma and adverse childhood experiences, burnout recovery, and intentional wellness. Beautiful, Renee Eva. It is so wonderful to have you here. Thank you for being on the Conscious Evolution podcast. Thank you so much for having me, Andrea. <laughs> Well, I'm so excited that we get to sit in ceremony and sing together in ceremony again this year. It's It really has been such a, a gift to be in your magical midst and your bubble of just beautiful, beautiful mm. sound healing and energy and vibration. Like I really do believe that you add so much to this container of safety and, mm. and helping people to go within. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that as well, to sit with you in ceremony and yeah, can't wait. <laughs> yeah, it's good stuff. Well, I think it would be really helpful to explore a little bit of your background. Um, you know, now you are facilitating and you're sharing music in all sorts of different medicine ceremonies, but your work really started off in the the world of domestic violence and, and animal safety and then your own personal journey really led you to embrace using your voice in this new way. So I just love to hear about kind of that journey, that that transformative arc. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, there there's a lot of things in there. So let me just think where to start. I'll, I'll pick it up from what you said. My my profession, my background, professional background, which lies in the link between domestic violence and animal abuse. And I've been working within that field for about six years, and I started off as a veterinarian assistant, so like really only working with the animals, which I always loved, you know, animal well-being and taking care of the planet, environment, and animal was also always uh, one of the most important things to me, and it still is. So I decided to become this veterinarian uh, assistant, technician, you'd say. But within that work, I really noticed that 
um, you know, animal abuse could could occur, and it was really hard to mm. um, to recognize that. So I started learning more about the link between domestic violence and animal abuse, which there really is all over the world, and also within the Netherlands. You know, there are high rates of domestic violence as well. So I, I kind of got specialized in that area, and then I started uh, working with a foundation who actually did that line of work where they um, took care of the animals and their owners who, who escaped their situation at home where um, domestic violence was at play. So I worked for about five or six years within this field and I think four or five years within actual women's shelters where I yeah, interacted with women and children and men, you know, the, the victims of uh, domestic violence who, who fled to the shelters and they could take their animal mm. um, in these places that I worked. This was something, is something special. It's not a, a given that you can take your animal with you, but because these animals are like their children and they, they yeah. protect, of course. So, so it was beautiful work. It was also a very hard, um, yeah, energy to be around. But I always had this inner fire of wanting to make the world a better place, right? And and really fight it from the inside out. So I did that for quite some time. But in the meantime, like in my personal life, plant medicine played a huge role in my personal um, exploration, you know, of my inner world. And, and I also sang and I assisted in ceremonies. And so it was already a part of my life. And then I think now, three years ago, yeah, in, in 2021, I decided to fully quit my job within the field of the link, as they call it, um, although I loved it so much and it really needed some time for me to actually forgive myself for the fact that I was quitting that line of work, but then really recognizing what I actually had to offer within this line of work, you know, where in a way it kind of really crosses because it's all about recognizing your own patterns, right? And how to how to create a better world for all of us and how to be a more happy, a happier person, I would say. Um, and there, yeah, within this, in this work of plant medicine or just exploring the inner world, that is what is most important. So I'm, I'm curious to know about like the pivot point, the turning point. And was it in 2015 when you had that ayahuasca experience that, for your personal journey that that really started to to shift things yeah for me personally i i always say there is actually a renee before and after uh, that ceremony and yeah. if i'm really honest it was not the first ceremony but it was the second ceremony where i really found that shift in the first ceremony in in i it, i was um 30 and it's funny because you can call this experience the nada it's like the nothing. Yeah. So it's an experience, right? That we find very like, oh, we're embarking on this journey and it's going to be so exciting and we're going to take plant medicine and, and how is this going to open us up? And then nothing happens or so, so it seems. you didn't see visions? There was no, no did you no. purge? Did you? Well, eventually I did. But for me, the biggest insight, I would say, I gained it from that ceremony, the the ceremony where nothing happened. And because of the fact that I was so, there were so many judgments, you know, I was mm. looking at the shaman, he was whistling. I didn't understand why is he whistling? And <laughs> I didn't understand that, that energetic work, you know, at that moment. And I, I just had so many judgments about myself, mostly, of course. And I thought people were looking at me and, and I just couldn't fall through Mm. And, and let the medicine do it, do her work. And after the ceremony, I was with some friends and they were like, oh, wow, we're all one and, and we're all connected. And they had this beautiful experience. And I felt like I didn't feel any of that. But what I did see more than ever was that I see now what, what I do to myself mm. in the sense of these patterns. And sometimes there has to be a loop or it has to uh, put on it or magnified like so big that only then we can recognize yeah. our pattern or our, you know, limited belief or our behavior that we keep repeating. So for me, that was that was the biggest thing in that ceremony. And 
what actually happened is that my friends they had a beautiful ceremony and they felt like well this is it we're, we're you know I just we just needed one and and I felt for me it's the beginning because then I knew okay I know what I did wrong sort of say like I know that I just resisted it I stayed in my head and and I really felt like oh but I feel this is this is for me I and then three weeks later, there was another ceremony and I attended that one. And it was the, the full shabam, you know, the, the complete oneness experience. And, and how I describe it is that I, I held myself for six hours and it was unconditional love. And really mm. with Mother Ayahuasca, you know, really, really that energy and that deep understanding of that we are so much more than just a human suit with bones and and I always felt that throughout my whole life, but I never, I never could access it or pinpoint it, right? And after this ceremony, I just, I just felt really, literally, like coming home, like, like, oh yeah, mm. okay. So you see, I'm not crazy. I knew this. This is it. Mm. And and I felt from there on, my journey started uh, with plant medicine, with ayahuasca mainly. If you have felt drawn to sit with psilocybin, then I invite you to join us on retreat in the Netherlands, where it is completely legal and safely facilitated with me and an expert team. We are all trauma-trained, trauma-informed, culturally competent and sensitive facilitators, and you will be held with the utmost care so that you can safely dive into your psyche for deep healing and conscious evolution. So check out our website at onedrea.com. That's the number one, D-R-E-A.com. And you can learn more about each of our variety of psilocybin truffle retreats in the Netherlands. I look forward to seeing you there. Doing actually a lot of ceremonies in the beginning. Mm -hmm. You know, 10 years ago, it was, it was a bit different, I would say, than it is now. Um, there was also not really a lot of I for integration. Mm -hmm. It was like you do the ceremony, and and I was very fortunate to to sit in ceremony with with really beautiful people who really knew what they were doing and who you know held the space beautifully and who also were available for sharing or questions. But that that was it. You know, there was no integration deal or package or or really the emphasis on how to bring this then into your daily life. Um, so I think for two years, I, I did a lot of ceremonies, mm -hmm. um, because I just felt like I needed, I, I wanted to absorb. It was so healing. And so, and then at a certain moment, I really started to realize, oh, wait, you know, life is one big ceremony mm -hmm. and it is all about the integration, right? Like how do we actually embody and bring into our daily life what we what we learn there or what we are given there in that in that field of consciousness so then it started to balance out a little bit uh, for me so I, I did that thing in the beginning when you just ex when you discover this this beautiful medicine and then you just you just keep going for it and you know I also was like to everyone but I wanted to say to everyone, but this is the key. People, you have to do this. This <laughs> this is but of course now I understand it doesn't work like that, you know. But but I went through these these stages and I I guess it's really part of this learning curve, right? And of deepening the layers and of learning more and more about yourself. And yeah, so it was quite a journey and quite fast I I was um invited to sing in ceremony um with a with a shaman and I found it very scary. Yeah. And it was funny because I, I had been singing ever since I was 14 and singing in bands and, you know, but I, then I always chose to sing like the powerhouses like Alanis Morissette and Melissa, uh, Melissa Etheridge and Skunk and Nancy. And, and I recognized that that was really because I just wanted to be seen, be heard. And I wanted to show them that I could hit these notes and, yeah. and it never really came from a place of, of the heart or of really, you know, and, and really that journey of singing from a different place inside myself mm. started 10 years ago, simultaneously, I, I would say with, uh, with ayahuasca for me, she was the, the plant medicine I worked with in the beginning. And, um, 
So that's been a beautiful journey. And then being invited to sing within ceremony, what happened there and, and how, how it just came through me. I, I started to understand, oh, wow, so this is what singing is about, you know? Mm. It's, it's, it literally is this healing, this energy, this healing for myself in, in the first place, you know, because it really started to come from my heart. And it was quite a journey because I, I always thought that I needed to sound perfect, you know, don't go off tune, don't mix up your lyrics or stuff like that. And then here you are all of a sudden in a field where actually it's about dropping all of that and just open up and let let come through whatever wants to come through. So I've been really diving into that the last years. And uh, yeah, still sometimes I'm, I'm in my mind and I have these voices like, oh, that's not nice. Or, but then, you know, that that's part of it. And I'll, I'll calm these voices down and I say, well, thank you. And I'll just because sometimes strange things come <laughs> when you really uh, strange things come out of your mouth, like uh, uh, vocalizing when you really vocalize what is in the room, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's been beautiful to witness that, to, to watch you tune into the energy and to be able to choose. It's not always a song like you, you will just vocalize or with the shroomy box as we now call it <laughs> um you know or the or the the bells or the bowls or the you know it's like you're weaving sound frequencies based on the energy in the the maloka or the temple space and it's it really does feel like magic and i i get that that feeling um i think the first time i sang was actually during a mushroom ceremony and at first I was all in my head, like, oh, it, I'm not going to sound as good as that person or that person or whatever. But once you like drop in and become a vessel and just open up, I found that the things that were coming forward, I was like, wow, I've never done that on stage before. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it's exactly what you're saying, right? It's, be it's, it's becoming a vessel. It's becoming a channel. And, and to step aside for whatever wants to come through. And I guess, in a sense, that is what energy work is all about, right? That is what, what guiding in ceremony is all about, to, to really step out of the way yeah. uh, in that sense. And, and yeah, that's an amazing thing to do with voice work. And, you know, and I'm still exploring that because it, it, there are so many layers within that. And, and sometimes it goes easier than another time, right? So it also depends on, and I start to recognize that, like, oh, where am I at? How am, how am I feeling? How am I doing? And what do I need to do to, right, to become that open vessel? And, um, yeah, it's, it's beautiful. And especially when it happens, I think, when we sit in ceremony and, there is someone who is who is going through something and of course when you are in the circle everyone is going through something and but sometimes there is a specific theme or a specific person that i resonate with or that i really feel and i can just sense or feel that stuck emotion you know whether it's anger or sadness or fear or whatever it's just something really unprocessed and i i it happens several times where where i can tune into that or that just happens you know i don't mm -hmm. necessarily deliberately do that but i just i just pick it up when i'm in that zone and then all of a sudden my my attention or my my energy is drawn to some person and and then it's like i vocalize um what they are feeling or it's this raw unpressed emotion that comes through me and that's why i say it's not always pretty or it's it's mm. it, you know what comes out because it can be very confronting so and it requires of me of course to step out of the way to to take away all these little voices that say oh that doesn't sound nice renee that's not you know but it's not about that right it's like really raw emotion vocalized and and then what happens when they are ready to resonate with that or when it's ready to be seen or heard let me put it that way then yeah it, it can really transform you know it mm -hmm. can really go into the space or transform within their field or within their body and i had it several times where people really came up to me afterwards or 
or within the circle shared like it, it was almost like a surgical instrument yeah. you know these these tones and yeah and it's just amazing it's like magic it's like magic as you said and and it's it's yeah it makes me so um excited to to learn more and to keep growing in this field you know because even though I, i've been in this psychedelic space for for 10 years and really had quite some experience now of, of facilitating and guiding i i still so so see the layers of this work and that mm. um i really consider myself a student always you know but that brings excitement for me like it's it's never ending and yeah yeah i feel the same way i feel like every group every individual brings something new and even if they feel like they're a similar type to someone else the way it unfolds is always new and and it allows us to show up as something new instead yeah. of feeling like okay i've got this i'm fixed in this one way of facilitating the being yeah so I, I also really love that you, uh, on our retreats, facilitate a workshop, helping people to tune into the power of their own voice, which I find in the medicine space is ideal because as people are working through their drama, their trauma, many people find that they, they have not always had the full power of their voice. And I don't mean to sing, I mean like speaking up for themselves, setting boundaries, being able to say what they actually want and I find that the, the the feedback that I've heard from people when they attend your workshop, it's like, I didn't think I didn't think I could do it, but the way that Renee facilitated it, it became easy and it actually became fun. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I I I love working and and just like you said, especially I think within the space of you know after a ceremony in a retreat where you embark on this journey, already so much is is open and set in motion that it, it really is like a form of integration and I think yeah. body work in a sense because it's very somatic as well I think voice work you know because we really journey through our body using our our voice as a tool for that and yeah it's and it's also very vulnerable it's very it's it's a very sensitive area right our throat just like you say speaking our truth like ugh, that's, that's really scary if i'm still you know it's it's like this ongoing process and, and learning deepening and yeah and what i love is to to see if i can help people shift or change their relationship with their voice so you know, we are all born with this magical instrument. Um, and and I always say, I, I, I've heard this um, uh, one, one day from a teacher and, and she said, like, when we are born, you know, we we announce our ourselves into the world. And the first thing we do is we take a breath in. And the next thing we do is we scream our lungs out and we open up and we fill the space and we really say, world here am i you know here i am and it it is received as the greatest gift by the doctors by the parents like whoa look at these pair of lungs that that baby yeah. can you know so it's funny how when we enter this world it is being celebrated the louder the noise the you know the full spectrum of our voice and then of course we grow up and yeah, we are. Everything is is diminished, and and you're told don't scream, don't don't sound so funny, and stop singing. It's not beautiful, you know. It's not good enough, and and then we end up using this this part of the full spectrum of our voice. Actually, what our voice can do, and we end up using this. And so to just recognize that, and to also recognize how the voice is like like a bridge, almost like a portal mm -hmm. between the inner and the outer world. Right? It's it's like manifestation almost in its purest form because it's literally something that we that happens from within we we form a word it comes through this area and then we literally manifest it in in the outside world in this in this tangible sometimes for some not maybe but field around us that is full of information and so we create we co-create we constantly and for me, that was one of the most biggest shifts of perception that I 
that I gained when working in the field, you know, after that ceremony, actually, that first, uh, second one with ayahuasca, where I really understood, like, there is not nothing between you and me. This mm -hmm. air is not nothing. It is a field full of infinite possibilities and everything is is there, you know, and it's like, and then you can almost feel like when you speak, it has a, it has a sub substance in a way, yeah. you know, it, it, it holds a vibration, right? Your words, your tone, where you speak from, from your body, you know, is it, is it like really centered? Are you like, oh yeah, can we, I can speak actually a bit lower, you know, because I'm a bit like, Ooh. and, and so you can use that voice mm -hmm. and I still do that and, and catch myself like, oh yeah, I can, can bring myself down actually a little bit and really use your voice or yeah where where am i at at the moment you know and when when we're really heady and busy and it's like often we speak up we we we're in higher pitch and we speak from here and we're you know it's it's very airy it's very but then it's so amazing if you can catch that or if you can just take these moments where you breathe and you can just bring it down and so i do a lot of exercises around that and then of course also within yeah, you can call it voice work or voice liberation, and and what it it, it holds a lot of layers as well. There mm -hmm. are a lot of personal ways, I guess, to work with the voice. But one of my main pillars, how I use it, is to again use that voice or work with that voice as a um, as a compass, really, within the body. You know, the body, of course, holds everything, and you can uh, sing from a certain area in your body or make sound from a certain area in your body or maybe from a certain feeling you know maybe the part of you that really doesn't want to be here a part that feels a lot of resistance how how would that sound if you would give voice to that part and that in itself can be so healing and give so many insights because you really are are giving voice literally to a part of you that maybe was always diminished or swept under the rug or, you know, so you can do this whole exploration in many ways, on many layers, layers on, on feelings, on part of you, parts of you, on, on organs, on, you know, anything, and just go through it with your voice. And, um, and for me, it was one of the most profound experiences that I had when I had my first session with voice work which was I think eight years ago so it was like already two years in in ceremonial work and singing in ceremony where we did an exercise and it was beautifully held because safety of course is you know feeling safe to show that vulnerability is number one um and it was an exercise or an activity about really tapping into that inner child and then finding you know we were beautifully guided towards that of course um and then the invitation to sound like that child and what happened for me and i really didn't expect that is that i started screaming mm. so so loud uh and it was a tremendous amount of anger that i held and i guess i heard it before from people that i trusted from people that I knew that could look into these layers of, you know, you say you're fine, but you can actually really feel that someone is not, or you can just maybe feel like, ooh, there's a lot of unprocessed stuff, you know, and this person, I really, I, I, I knew this um, person could see that quite clearly. And he had mentioned that to me, like, I think there is a lot of anger in you that you haven't really tapped into yet or that you mm. carry a lot of anger within you. And at that moment, I I really couldn't feel it. And I also uh, trusted in the fact that, well, if that is true, then I know it will present itself in a way that it's manageable for me and in a, and when it's time for that, you know? Mm. So, so it was funny to really literally be amazed or be surprised by what came out like a volcano erupting really mm -hmm. i i had no idea and it just and it was so liberating yeah. and and so so powerful to to let that part of me that that inner child that was actually very angry 
about everything that happened. You know, I'm always very understanding towards anyone and everything. Hmm. And I've always had that ever since I was a little child. And of course, uh, you know, that that's how that was my survival mechanism in a way, of course, just understanding everyone, you know, and, and there was this part of me that just really was very angry about mm-hmm. what, what had been done to her. So to unleash that in that moment through the tool of the voice was for me very, yeah, was amazing and liberating. So it it was such a profound experience. And with that, I know what we can do. And therefore, I always say we don't need anything outside of ourselves, right? We we have all the tools. We have our body, our breath, our voice to actually make this journey within. Hmm. It doesn't mean that they are great allies to work with plant medicine and to, you know, and, and different modalities. I mean, but they are all tools, beautiful tools to, yeah, to explore our inner world. And you can do that with the voice, you know? So, yeah, these are very powerful workshops and and they're beautiful to incorporate in a retreat because it almost feels like they just drop a little deeper because yeah. people are already in that space and there's already this safe space of the group. Um, so yeah. it's more inviting to really open up into where maybe you haven't dared to go before yet, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and it's 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 powerful because with the support of whatever the plant or fungi that you've taken that do give more access to this unconscious material, and then to have gifted facilitators who can just lead the process, yeah, um, it can really flow. So yeah. it sounds like you know y- you having awareness of your own trauma in your past and healing that in your plant medicine journeys. And then, of course, the work you did with domestic violence and animal abuse, now being in this medicine space to facilitate, it sounds like your trauma-informed facilitation really is is like super rich from all of the experiences you've had. Are you a therapist, a coach, or a doctor who might be interested in providing safe, ethical, and legal psychedelic preparation or integration, then check out my new course with the Academy of Therapy Wisdom. It is the trauma-informed psychedelic therapist. I'm really proud of this course. It includes pre-recorded modules as well as live calls and homework and group discussions that will really help you prepare for this exciting field in the most ethical and trauma-informed way. So check that out. If you happen to be a person who wants to prepare for your own psychedelic journey, whether you're doing that with ketamine or in a legal setting or flying to South America, I want you to be prepared. So check out my course, The Ultimate Guide to Safe Psychedelic Preparation. It is a jam-packed, full-on course that will teach you about psychedelic substances, their legality, how to prepare yourself, especially if you've had any trauma in your background, what to look for in a relatable and reliable and safe shaman or psychedelic facilitator. In the Ultimate Guide course, we also meet once a month so that you can ask me questions live. You can also connect with a global community of emerging psychonauts So check out these two resources for you. I've made them with all of my heart and love so that you can be prepared and be safe. And I feel like in a way I, um, I did it um, that way already uh, intuitively, you know, Mm -hmm. also because, yeah, because of that understanding, but just really understanding that, you need to someone you need to meet someone at the level they're at mm-hmm. level it might not be the good word but just to you know it's funny because this kind of goes two ways because on one side i want to say i can always be very hard on myself still but i've really learned that was one of my things that I've, i'm really hard on myself and i learned that actually in a subtle way or in a i also maybe expected that from other people or that I thought like, you know, don't be so dramatic, for example, just, you know, just get it over with. Mm. I really, truly understand now, you know, of course, there are layers in being dramatic or not, but it doesn't matter. Everything is valid. It's, it, it is what that person 
needs in that moment or what that person can see in that moment. And you are just there and holding space for that. And for me, what working trauma-informed in the psychedelic space really means is that, you know, there is an awareness of the fact that we we all come in with a certain amount of trauma, right? And whether that's a big T or a little T, as they as they mm-hmm. say within the in, in the field of trauma work. And as Gabor Mate says, it's not about the actual trauma that occurred. It's about how that person dealt with that, right? How that nervous system took that in. Were there resources for that nurse nervous system to to release or regulate, co-regulate after that? And so it doesn't matter what kind of trauma it was. It matters that it all has this effect on on the nervous system, on how we react to things. So it's like this internal internal sense of safety. Mm-hmm. And I guess just to be aware of that, that everyone walks in with that, you know, blueprint in a way or blueprint in the nervous system that, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then to to also know how to create a safe space for, for that. And I would say in, in psychedelic space, well, it shows up in many ways, but for example, um, uh, really making sure that there is, um, everything goes slow, you know, psychedelics can be very um, explosive. Yeah. <laughs> so, but in, in the guidance around it, um, yeah, to really, to really go slow and to make sure that people know that everything is an invitation. You know, they're not, mm. they don't have to do something. Everything is an invitation. To, so to just have, be constantly aware of where is someone at? How are, how are they reacting? Are they getting over stimulated? What's, what state of their, is their nervous system in? Is it, you know, and just, and for me, um, my style of facilitation, if you can call it that way, is to, to really bring myself into, so to, to sit there with vulnerability and realness, whatever there is in that moment. And of course, there's a sense of professionalism, you know, professionality where you, but I would say I, I rather be real. Um, and I, I, uh, for me, that really, really works because that is actually, I think, what safety brings, right? The integrity, the realness, the vulnerability, and then, of course, also someone needs to know what they're doing. I mean, yeah. if you have a heart surgeon, you can't trust the heart surgeon just on his on his integrity and vulnerability. And, right. you know, you want to know that he so that goes without saying. But I, I would say for me, that is one of the most important things to to keep doing the work in that way, because no matter what people say, I believe that you always bring in your own process in a mm-hmm. way when you facilitate, mm-hmm. you know, to a certain extent. So I rather be aware of it and name it or then to just shy away from it or, you know, pretend it's not there. Or, and that's why I love working with a team, a team that approaches it is, uh, that in the same way where, yeah, where there is actually also a safe space around us in the team, you know, to, to talk about certain things like maybe I'm triggered by something. It's very, very good to have to work with a team where you can actually voice that yeah uh so that you can you know discuss with your team okay so how we're going to deal with this maybe then there's another person in this team who says i'm not i'm not triggered by that person at all and so then you can you you know you can mind that between of you and and i really love that because it's i think one of the most important things of, of being a good facilitator is really do you really have the um the willingness to look at yourself and do your own work yeah because there and, is yeah go ahead no i just want to say because there is always 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 a constant um projection going on yeah. you know transference counter transference of course so uh, that i think is is the most important thing right and you can only hold space for someone in the depth that you can hold space for yourself yeah so that that's really my yeah yeah i find that that is crucial and it's it's what has led me to be very thoughtful about the teams that i put together because i've 
I've served on teams. I've been on teams where people ha- were not doing their own work. They didn't have that self-awareness and ended up spewing their stuff onto other people, mm-hmm. both team members and the participants. And it's one of the reasons why I started the Alchemy of the Soul Apprenticeship is to help people have camaraderie, a supervisor to go to. You know, for us in in medicine, just because you finish a, an exam doesn't mean you're ready to go out there and practice medicine or surgery. Like we've always had these steps. And I find that that's missing a lot. I find that people are either sitting with the medicine and, and they feel like they've been called to be a medicine woman or a medicine man without having some of these checks and balances to really know oneself and to have that 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 honesty and integrity to say, oh, wait, I am triggered. Can we have a conversation? You know, because yeah. um, I've certainly I've certainly had things come up and 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 have had the benefit of being with good team members where I felt safe enough that we could have these conversations and all of us could grow from it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And also, you know, that that you can kind of point each other out on your blind spots, right? Because yeah. they are blind spots. And and I really learned the importance of working with a team and I always saw and knew that, but but there's there's just so much more you see together, right? Because yeah. we also all see different programming or different things from other people because we we resonate in a different way. Yeah. So it's it's just so rich to really be with a team who who have that view and then yeah to bring that in together yeah i agree that's that's very very important and you know that's why i also i I think to always walk this path with curiosity and and humbleness and then again i also know that if i speak personally or for myself there there are moments where i could actually step a little bit more into this into this um, energy or into this, like, no, I, I have the experience, you know, I, I, I understand this now. And so I'm, I'm always juggling a little bit, like really understanding this. The more I know, the more I know, I know nothing, you know, Mm -hmm. and in the same time, no, also owning what you do know and what you do bring into space. And so for me, it's, it's that constant balance and, and you can't do that alone. You need you need uh, peers and and um, people around you, colleagues around you, friends around you, mm. that you, you know you, to keep each other sharp in that yeah. sense. So, yeah, yeah. Well, I have loved serving with you, and I'm I've loved this conversation. And I know that for the people who are going to join us on retreat, they are in for just such a gift to be in your presence and to to have your voice and your melodies and all of that um, as they're journeying. So I understand that you're also available to support people if if they are hosting retreats. You can work as a facilitator, as a musician. And so I would invite people to check you out online at renee-eva.nl for the Netherlands. And also on Instagram, I'll put um, all of that in the show notes. Well, thank you so much, Andrea. It was really nice talking to you. I feel actually I have a lot more to share. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's uh, so, okay. We can we can do this again. So I really, really enjoy this. Thank you so much for inviting me for this talk. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm so grateful that I can share you with our audience and that I'll be seeing you in just a few weeks in yeah. the Netherlands pretty soon yeah okay. all right thank you dear one be thank well you. <laughs> thank you for tuning in to the conscious evolution podcast if you enjoyed this episode please share it with a friend subscribe and leave us a review and rating on your favorite podcast player this helps us get the content out to a larger audience and to watch the video version of the podcast visit the pennington media youtube channel Want more info on how psychedelics may improve your mental well-being? How to choose a retreat? Or what to look for in a shaman? Get on the Psychedelic Curious email journal. The link is in the show notes and on my website. You can also sign up for my free masterclass series, where each month I take a deep dive into a topic in holistic healing, trauma recovery, self-love, resilience, and psychedelic-assisted therapy.